So you want to become a developer, but you don't know which path you're actually on. I'm going to tell you right now. All right, guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video and hit the notification bell. Okay, make sure you hit that. All right. So this video is brought to you by the good people at devoutlet.com. You already know at devoutlet.com, you could get all the cool gear for developers, man. Go get yourself a 365 code challenge hoodie, man. Stop playing with yourself, man. <laughs> get the fitted, get the hoodie. You already know, sponsored by. All right, guys. So let's get to it. Different paths for developers. All right. A lot of you guys have been asking yourself like, oh, man, like, what should I do? Uh, what's the best way for me to become a developer? What's the best way for me to get higher? And to be honest with you, there's a lot of different ways that you could get in. OK, so I'm going to go over the majority of them. OK, so let's get started. So we got the programmer. Who is the programmer? The programmer is a dude or girl who usually went to a university, all right? And then not the best developer, okay? But they have a lot of connections to the industry. Meaning, you know, usually when you go to school, you make friends. Usually when you go to school, uh, <laughs> you might be the party guy. You might be the girl that's out here on the Instagram taking pictures, worrying about, hey, uh, you know, what likes I got, this, this, and that, who's hitting me up on the DM, right? So while you're doing that, there's usually a, a, another uh, student next to you who becomes your friend who ends up being hired at different companies and, and, and different opportunities. And somehow, because you know them, you know, they connect you into it, right? So it happens in, in everywhere, right? Or you might be the guy who just, you went to school, but at the same time, you already know that, hey, man, I got an uncle who has a startup. Or, hey, man, you know what? Uh, one of my brother's best friend, he's CTO at a company. So then now you already have those connections, right? You don't really got to do much. You just got to know the basics and they'll pull you in, okay? It happens all the time, okay? Learns most of his skills on the job, his or her, right? It could be a guy, it could be a girl. This happens all the time. I've seen it. Plenty of times in, in companies where I'll be like, man, how is this guy even here? You know, and then you realize, oh, your uncle is da da da, or oh, the, your brother's with who? Oh, now it makes sense. It happens all the time. In every company, every industry, it doesn't matter. There's going to be nepotism. There's going to be, you know, hookups, you know. <laughs> There's going to be a plug. And even in the web dev community, the tech community, period, there's always going to be some type of plug where, you know, people pull you in, okay? It's normal. It's life. We can't do anything about it, all right? So the next one is the self-taught, okay? The self-taught, that's why I classify myself too, okay? The self-taught, uh, learning online from different platforms, you know, busting his ass constantly online, learning everything that's out there, okay? Going over uh, different projects, right? Usually has very good portfolio to show his skills because his portfolio and his work is actually what speaks for him. Well, I can actually say, you know what, this guy's a good developer because he doesn't have a degree, he doesn't have a certification, he doesn't have any of the things that somebody else might rely on. We rely on our work, and that's where I classify myself too on as a self-taught developer, right? Now, lacking the fundamentals of computer science, okay? There's a lot of things that by getting a degree you get that solid foundation. When you don't get that degree, you don't have that solid foundation. And that's something that you gotta work on. Okay? And that's why I usually recommend that once you start working as a developer, you start learning more about computer science and the lower level of uh, basically programming. You know, everything from garbage collection to uh, lower languages like C, maybe C++, right? And I was thinking about this yesterday. I was watching on Google IO's uh, conference they were talking about how they created an application in c plus plus right that basically compresses the images uh, to a very tiny small size then they use a web assembly to connect it to the web and i was like thinking in my head i was like man how many guys out here you know 
actually know how to do all of this stuff, right? Like this is more lower level, right? And this is something that as a self-taught developer, you are lacking. And, and that's just being 100% honest, right? I went through the same thing, right? I actually had to go online. And, and even after I started working, I, so I went in and got my computer science foundation through online taking uh, school uh, courses like the uh, Harbor uh, University online courses or, or going to EDX or Coursera, right? Right? Like those are things that you just have to do for yourself, just for your own growth. It doesn't mean that it's stopping you from getting a job, but just because if you want to grow as a developer, you're just going to have to do it. OK, so it is what it is. Now, uh, the next thing is suffers the most from imposter syndrome. OK, the self-taught developer usually uh, is the one that suffers the most. OK, when it comes to imposter syndrome and it's because you feel like because you don't have a degree, you don't have this paper behind you. Right. You feel like, man, this guy's that's smarter than me. This guy's that's going to be better than me. But in reality, that's all bullshit. Right. <laughs> to be honest with you, because once you're working and once you're you're hired, you're good to go. OK, you know, what I mean, like take that out of your mind don't worry about if you got a degree or not you can get a degree later on if that's something that you really really want you could get a degree whenever okay so yeah don't worry about it don't 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 stress yourself out okay now this is a great way to get into the industry because you usually have the projects and the type of work that companies need you to do straight off the bat right like as soon as you start going in like you already know what to do because you've been actually building projects and companies really love that because we need somebody that can actually do the work, not just somebody that can say, hey, man, I got a degree. And, and, and that happens a lot of times. OK, then there's the bookworm. Who is the bookworm? Right. Usually went to college or university, uh, usually don't have any real projects when they graduate. And that happens all the time. If you feel a certain way and you feel like, no, I had a lot of good projects when I graduated. Leave a comment. Let me know. OK, I want to know. But the majority of people that I see straight out of college, they don't have no real projects, bro. Like they went to school. You know, usually people like to get an A. People like to get their B's. You know, they like to just pass the, cl the class and be like, well, I got to see. Right. Right. But in reality, it's very rare that that people come in and, and and actually take time after school to start building projects and and see what type of, of projects they need to get a job. And that happens all the time. So in reality, what they do is they study a lot of algorithms because that's really where they can demonstrate their knowledge in programming and the fundamentals that they got in school. OK, solid foundation of computer science. OK, uh, they got the theory, you know, computer science 101. They got, uh, you know, math up to calculus two and three, you know, linear equations, etc. Right. It goes deep. Right. They got that solid foundation. So in reality, they know what they're doing. They just lack in the projects. OK. In the experience uh, usually gets in by passing technical tests. OK, those are the guys that they go in and be like, you know what? I'm going to apply to Google and I'm going to bust my ass the next two months to study all of these algorithms and keep my mind fresh. Like they don't even focus on projects. Like, I'll be honest, a lot of guys don't even focus on projects. What they're focusing is on the technical questions and the technical tests. Now, this is not for everybody. OK, uh, some people are not good on taking tests because you get nervous, you get, um, you know, there's a lot of situations that can go wrong. Right. You could probably forget everything, even though, you know, it, you could forget everything because of the pressure. OK, so if you are a guy that actually is really good on taking tests and, and you know, don't break under the pressure, then you're perfectly a good bookworm. OK, <laughs> so shout out to you. All right. And usually they get hired a lot of times in, in, in corporate companies that use mostly like like dot net, you know, the slacks, the, the little three three little pens right here like you know those are the guys that usually work in those corporate environments all right and and that's because those environments they they like that idea of somebody that just got their degree and they got the fundamentals all right so definitely if you are a bookworm hey man we're we're very proud okay the networker who is the networker 
okay a social developer all right we have seen them everywhere okay uh goes to every meetup conference and event all right actually host their own events or uh usually creates their own meetup groups all right you're very active online youtube twitter pinterest instagram pretty much everywhere all right now because people know them they will get job opportunities all right and, and this is a very good example let's say for example i come in and i show up to every meetup right and one day there's a job opportunity and they need a front-end developer or a back-end developer right instead of a company hiring a random person that they don't even know right somebody that goes to that meetup group or goes to that conference says hey I know little Billy. Hey, I know little Cindy. You know, I'm comfortable working with them. You know, sometimes they might not have all of the skills, but because they have done so much networking and, and people know their faces, right? They're like, you know what? Bring them on, right? So what they lack in skills, they make up by being active in the community, right? So that's perfectly fine. If you are the networker, that's completely fine. You know, wear it you know proudly okay it's fine <laughs> we do need the networkers right those are the guys that usually make events happen those are the guys that that get shit done okay um and yeah shout out to them all right the next one the wasted talent okay and there's a lot of wasted talent okay uh usually the wasted talent are talented developers okay <laughs> anti-social not good working in teams all right those are the guys that think they know everything the guys that be like uh, this guy's wrong this guy's wrong uh we should be doing it like this this is how i want the code written this is how you know let me do a uh, <laughs> let me do a code review on your code like bro like it's working everything's good right everything is perfect good why you worry about other people's code constantly right but that that's what happens right the waste of talent now usually has over 100 git repos but no one knows they exist right and this usually is the guys that be either in the mama's basement that you might see them on on reddit you might see them on on twitter right that they're constantly judging other developers work or constantly uh saying hey we could do this faster hey we could do this better or this this, and that but nobody knows them okay because they're so smart and so talented that in reality they're too good for everybody Okay, and it happens all the time. I see it all the time here on YouTube. I see it all the time on, on Twitter. I see it all the time on Instagram. There's people that's very talented, that's working on, on very good projects in their house. And nobody knows who they are. Nobody knows what they're building, right? And in reality, time flies by. Next thing you know, they're like 40-something years old. And they've never worked as a developer. But they're very talented, but in their house okay and that happens all the time so rarely works as a developer uh i've seen people that um have gone that i've met like in a meetup and i'm like man this person is super talented right and then i start picking up on things i'm like oh wait why this guy's not hired you know and then you start realizing he's very judgmental of everybody's code he thinks he knows everything he thinks he, he has the solution to everything right so in reality it's hard for somebody like that to actually go and work for a company or work in a team where you have to actually say you know what be conscious of everybody's work and, and respect everybody's work right there's guys that are super talented but they're a waste of talent right because they're only at, at their house they're keeping all that knowledge keeping all that that uh you know those cool projects that they have and they're keeping it to themselves and not actually launching them I, look bro i've seen situations like i've done meetup groups and I, i've bumped into people where i'm like why haven't you made this available publicly why haven't you made it into a starter why haven't you this and that it's like well uh you know i just don't feel like uh i'm ready for that or uh, this this and that and then i'm like so do you work at a company it's like no you know currently you know uh, i'm working as a janitor and this is a real story this is not me making it up this is a real story a guy that was super talented and i'm like bro how long you been programming well i started in 1992 da 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 i was doing some vb or this, this and that and i'm like bro 
you're telling me you're out here working as a janitor and, and and you never really went the extra mile to start working with other people and working for companies so well you know i tried one time like <laughs> And, and, and this happens all the time. You know, if you guys know a, a, a waste of talent, leave a comment below, right? So wherever you fit in all of these different pathways, okay, I want you guys to leave a comment and let me know where do you think do you fit in? You know, do you think you are the networker? Do you think you are the bookworm? Do you think you are the self-taught? Do you think you are the programmer? Okay, do you think you are the waste of talent? Where exactly do you think you fit in? All right. Uh, I'm a mixture of between the networker and the self-taught. All right. So that's where I fit in. Okay. So, yeah, man. Anyways, guys, this is your boy Joe back at it again. CodingPhase.com. Make sure you go to CodingPhase.com, guys. Learn how to code. Right. If you want to take the self-taught route. Right. Come in. I got everything that you need to start going and, and get hired. Right. Because that's what I do as a self-taught developer. I only care about getting hired, getting the money, getting, getting my work in. And that's what I focus in. Right. If you're a person like me that wants to just start working as soon as possible, come to my website. Pretty much I learned so many different things and I just broke it down for you to learn it quicker and faster than anywhere else. All right. I'll see you guys later. It's your boy Joe back at it again. CodingPhase.com. Peace.